G'day everyone and welcome to a special interview we've got uh, with Crow's young gun, Ned McHenry, um, who uh, has broken into the Crow's best 22 this season. Ned, how are you going? Yeah, I'm well, thanks Bob. Thanks for having me on, man. Oh, no worries at all. Uh, and uh, we are just saying before we started, you pulled up a right after uh, after Saturday? Yeah, yeah, pulled up fine. Um, my body and stuff's all good. Obviously, I'm going to get disappointed, but um, yeah, my body and... And pulled up okay, so yeah, that was pleasing. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Ned, we usually go over a bit of backstory because it's a good opportunity for uh, fans to learn a little bit about uh, the new players in the club, and you've been on the list now for a couple of years. Um, have you found the transition to Matthew Nick's uh, challenging or different? Yeah, it has been different. Um, I wouldn't say challenging. I've really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working with Nixie. He's brought a different kind of dynamic to the club, which I think everyone's really embraced quite well. And obviously, he's a great guy, and he's just looking to get the best out of us as players. So uh, I've really enjoyed it. I had one year under Pikey, and obviously my second year under Nixie. And um, yeah, both coaches were great. A little bit different, but um, I've, I've really enjoyed working with Nixie. Yeah. Now, there's been plenty of stories uh, just going back to uh, your junior days. Plenty of stories about you running. 100 kilometre jogs just for no reason at all. How accurate are those, mate? Did you sort of run off into the distance and forget to turn around when you were younger? <laughs> um, yeah, some of those stories certainly grow legs a little bit, a little bit and get longer and longer as the story goes on. But, yeah, I just I enjoyed running when I was a kid. It was a, it was a good challenge and a good, good escape, I suppose. I just enjoyed running longer distances and and just going and kind of seeing how far you could get. So, yeah, there is definitely some truth to a few of those stories. But as I said, um, some stories like that often grow legs. <laughs> yeah, like Malcolm Blight's uh, kick growing from uh, 60 metres to, I think it's up to about 85 metres now, down at Cadinia Park. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm a fisherman too, mate, so I'm well aware of people, um, people uh, uploading yeah. certain catches and things like that too with fishing, so similar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you came up through the Geelong Falcons and, um, uh, you know, without being uh, um, heightest, uh, you're, a, you're a shorter player um, in comparison to a lot of other um, um, players in the system. Can you tell me a little bit about any sort of unique challenges um, that you faced uh, given, you know, you might not be what the current optimum AFL height is? Yeah, um, I haven't really, um, I haven't really thought about it too much, to be honest. Obviously, oh, sorry, you, <laughs> you can't really control. Um, so yeah, I just probably look to control the things I can control. And, and modern football at the moment is obviously a high pressure game. It's a high running game, so I'm fortunate that um, I suppose there's, there's a few rules for players like me and, and players my size. And I think across the league now, we're seeing some guys um, have real impact across across the competition at, at my kind of height and similar roles. So. Yeah, obviously fortunate that this kind of day and age suits sometimes players like myself. And I reckon back yeah. in the day there would have been fewer guys um, like me probably playing. Oh, mate, to be honest with you, back in my day you would have probably been a ruckman because uh, each generation has grown about five or five centimetres. Uh, uh, the ruckman yeah, in, in my good. team growing up was like six foot one. Can you imagine? Yeah, um, <laughs> Um, but you're right. I mean, we've got blokes like Presti running around now, and uh, Caleb Daniel down at West Western Bulldogs. Um, I guess um, it's unique about our game. Do you find that that puts you in a specific role, and has that sort of led you into a specific role in your uh, in your career so far? Um, yeah, probably in a way. Um, I like to think I have a element of versatility with the ability to probably play kind of wing and, and half forward at the moment and hopefully down the track look to play a little bit more inside in the midfield so there's probably three ways that I look to try and play and try and add, add an option to um, yeah. but yeah I mean there's certainly an element of a certain size um, different kind of niches and roles just like we yeah. need tall guys as you say playing in the rock and playing in key position roles we also need small guys playing in different roles so yeah as I said I think the modern game's kind of adapted hasn't it so now there's there's different 100%. kind of sizes, and, and so yeah. And look, your your strengths are, are clearly your aerobic endurance, um, your attack at the ball, and the contest. Your tackling has been fantastic to watch. Um, 
you know, uh, those sort of things bring um, some good defensive pressure to the mix. Um, what areas of your game have you found that you've needed to, to work on and what areas of your game do you feel, you know, have, have added to the mix for the Crows? Yeah, so in terms of working on it, there's plenty of things that I'm obviously looking to, to try and get better at. Um, my disposal is a big one, so just being clean and, and efficient with the ball is important at AFL level. Um, most players are really clean, and especially at my size. It's crucial that I'm clean and, and efficient, so that's something I'm looking to get better at and try and do, obviously, at AFL level. And then as well, to be honest, my body is something that I've had to really kind of work on and, and get to a state where you know, I'm not breaking down and so excuse me, and I can um, you know train at the level and train consistently and play without having kind of injury issues, which is going to help me back a little bit in my first couple of years. So um, yeah, getting my body to a position where I can train and, and then work on those things that I'm looking to work on. Yeah, have you found it a bit of a step up from junior level to? I mean, obviously it is, um, but that step up, even even though you're a bit of an endurance beast, you know, it's it's a different thing altogether to train specifically to play AFL football, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is, and, and it's had its challenges. I think for a lot of guys, talking to them, you know, guys in kind of the six, seven, six, six and, and seventh years now, they say in the first couple of years it was it was a bit of a challenge transitioning because we get up, you know, almost every day and train and, and gym and do all kinds of things. So, yeah. um, but you know, they've been really good to me in kind of just, you know, making sure that I just breathe and make sure things okay in terms of that. Yeah, they had some struggles too in the first couple of years, and, and the key is just working really diligently and, and making sure you get your body in a position where it's ready to then train and play and and, and that gives, yeah, gives you a good position to kind of get better at the things you want to get better at and play because you, you're not going to improve if you're not out on the track really and you're not playing games. Yeah, 100%. Um, now, we had Harry on a couple of weeks ago and we were talking to him about the vibe around the club. Um, just from an outsider's perspective, looking in, it looks like there's a real, um, uh, or Matthew has really tried to instill um, a family environment and a and a team ethos. Is that is that something? Is that an accurate sort of perception? Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. And and those are kind of things that we talk about, you know, just as much as we talk about our footy kind of tactics and game plans and stuff. You know, the culture and the environment we want to create, we feel is just as important as that kind of stuff. And, and everyone's buying in really well. We've got a, we've got a clear picture of what we want to create. And, um, yeah, guys, as I said, are buying in and creating that. And it starts with the older guys, but the younger guys as well are bringing the energy and they're really wanting to improve and, and look to add to that dynamic. So, um, mate, the club's just a great place to be at the moment. And we're all just really hungry to get better. Yeah, is there a sense of a, a start of a journey for, for this group? Uh, a little bit, but yeah, we're also in the moment, I think. I think that's one of the great things. We're present, you know. Every week we feel like we can win. We want to win now. We're not, you know, rebuilding is a word that's kind of getting thrown around a little bit in the mix. But, you know, we're, we're here now. We really want to win and play well. And there's a lot of competition for spots. Everyone's competitive. So as much as there is a lot of growth, uh, I suppose, from the younger guys, it's also, you know, we're here to play and we, we want to do well this year for sure. I mean, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because you get all the pundits and commentators and idiots like me talk about rebuilding and structures and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've played footy. I know what it's like. Every time you get over the white line, you're just playing to win, aren't you? So uh, it's really good to hear that the club's not shying away from actually trying to win games and let the cards fall as they may, so to speak. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and we'll improve and, and younger players will get better, hopefully, like me and other young guys, you know, we'll get better doing that. We want to go out and win and win games of footy and, and play really well as a group. We want to play our role and support each other and, and that's what's going to help us improve. And I think, you know, this year that's, that's what we're setting out to do. We're not here just to, you know, to rebuild as such. I suppose that's kind of the language around some of the commentary at the club at the moment, um, going through different phases. But we've got some older guys who are, you know, really good players and really good leaders of this footy club and they're, and they're trying to pull us along as young guys and it's, it's just great to be a part of it at the moment. Yeah, I'd really like you to do me a favour and have a look in Tex's bag and see what sort of um, diet he's on or what he's doing because he's in the form of his life at the moment. Oh, <laughs> and I want some of what he's star, having. <laughs> yeah, mate, he's just a star. We need to see what, what back lunch he's eating because uh, yeah. Yeah, I want some of those as well. Share it around. I don't know what he's having to do. To be honest, like his pre-seasons and stuff, ever since I've got, come to the club, I've just been so impressed. I mean, the guy is just a gun. He's a gun. So it's good to see him start the year off really well and 
just going to support him and hopefully play our roles in the forward and, and just be a good mix down there. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, not only have you had Matthew Nix coming to replace Don, but you've also had an influx of new uh, line coaches and assistant coaches this year. Have you noticed much difference in terms of the way that the um, the team is structuring up game day wise and it, like new tact? You don't have to go be specific, but has there been a lot of change in that regard? Uh, there's been there's been some changes. There's been some things that just kept similar as well. Um, I think it's like every year we're, we're looking to improve all the time and, and adjust things and get the best out of our group. Um, you know, work out what kind of group we have and how we can best you know employ that to, to play well and do well and support one another. So yeah, there's been some changes, but you know, nothing certainly crazy. We've just adjusted some things, and and those coaches that have come in have just been fantastic. I've loved working with all of them. Yeah. Hey, um, and when we spoke to Harry, uh, the new um, standing on the mark rule wasn't in yet. I don't even think Stephen Hawking had thought about it then. Um, how has that impact, from a player's perspective, how has that impacted you on game day, apart from just remembering to be a statue? How, has it changed tactics? And the, It looks from the outside as if it's changed the game completely. Is that how it feels? Uh, it, do, it does feel like the game is moving moving a little bit more kind of offensively, isn't it? And there's higher scoring games. So yeah. You know, I, felt I think they'd probably be looking at it and say, so far it's been, been a good, good kind of um, introduction. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure really. I think as players it's been something we've had to kind of consider and think about. And it has been a bit of an adjustment. But when you're playing, you're just kind of out there just, just thinking about your role more so than more so than maybe what it looks like as a viewer. But I, I definitely think it has improved scoring and from a fan's perspective and watching games. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of games you enjoy watching, but I suppose it has helped help score, team score. So um, I suppose it could be a positive there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not to touch on the game versus Sydney too much, but uh, it seems to me that... Um, at times, if you lose your shape a bit, um, other clubs can just make it very, very difficult to get the ball back off them. Have you found like defensive running to have increased to try and, you know, not too much clog up space, but these days you almost have to man up now, don't you? Yeah, in some ways, in some ways, a lot of a lot of teams, all teams, will play a certain kind of team defence style that they'll try and they'll try and play. So, um, you know, we're, we're similar. Obviously, we have a style that we want to do. So, the man on the mark has, has changed a few things. But, um, yeah, I suppose it's just something we'll have to adjust to and, and keep getting better at and, and work out ways that we can make it suit us. Because, as you say, it certainly has it has changed a few things. Yeah. Now, um, oh, I don't want to be... Uh, don't want to be too much focused on this, but you are known to uh, like a bit of chirp. Would that be a fair statement? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. It depends who you're talking to, I suppose. I, I, yeah, I like talking and I talk to people, but, yeah, not not, not crazy. Sure. Can, can you tell me what the best sledge is that you've received rather not given out because i don't want to i don't want to go down there but have you received a really good sledge where you're going yeah all right i'll pay that one yeah i mean there's plenty of plenty of decent ones there's, there's some older guys that always kind of get into you and, and tell you to kind of speak and spoken to and you know <laughs> younger, so down the and that kind of stuff and yeah it's been interesting the dynamic out there i suppose there's was no different really to any other football we play as cool and sort of soggy and stuff that goes on but I actually can't recall anything that's been too crazy. There's plenty of explicit ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more so just older players, I think, trying to tell you to pull your head in a little bit. Put put you back in your spot. Um, look, mate, yeah. Um, now, um, you've got VB now as sort of midfield coach, and I guess you've spent a bit of time with him and also James Raleigh. Is there anyone at the club specifically that you look at or that has sort of served as a bit of a mentor for you down there? Yeah, those, those two guys are, are fantastic and obviously coming in as, as newer kind of line coaches, they've been amazing at introducing a few new things and, and really you know, supporting us and, and helping us as young players working on our craft. But as I said, we've got some older guys as well at the club, um, or older guys that take a lot of young players under their wing and such and constantly looking at vision and, and helping out and phone calls constantly and just guys that are just constantly looking to make you a better player and help you improve. Um, you know, guys like Tom Lynch and, and players like that, especially Lynchy, I mean, he's just fantastic. He's, he's always looking to make you better and he's someone who's obviously worked with me a little bit 
playing a little bit of food and, and trying to help me with that. So, you know, it's funny because we, from the outside, we view Lynchy as a bit of a larrikin and enjoys a bit of a laugh and uh, doesn't mind a bit of chirp himself. But every time I speak to a player, Tom Lynch's name comes up as a leader. It, it, he clearly is, you know, a leader around the place. He has a, he has a massive impact on this footy club. And talking about what Nixie is trying to create and has created in, in terms of an environment where we we put each other first, we prioritise others. You know, it is a family feel down here and, and he's someone who just drives that so well and he stands that, that way every day. He just puts people before himself and constantly looking to help others and make each other better. So, yeah, he, he's someone who drives that and as a younger player, it's just hard not to, you know, feel that that's infectious and, and try and follow suit. Yeah, yeah. Now, the last bloke uh, who was any good who came from Geelong uh, is now the king of Geelong. Um, and uh, you know, we just want to make sure that you stick around. Have you got an Adelaide girlfriend, or you got ties in Adelaide, or uh, <laughs> you know, are, are we going to see you go back and surf down at Torquay and walk around the main street of Geelong at some stage? Yeah, obviously talking about Paddy Dangerfield. He's a um, he's a great fellow, Paddy. He, he lives in the city and loves his boating too. So I'm actually going to my fishing a North Bank boat, which Paddy. Paddy has one as well, actually. So I know yeah. Paddy, and he gets out in that out of the Mate, I'm so happy and settled in Adelaide at the moment. I know that's a cliche thing to say, to hear that in the news and the media all the time. But I really am pretty settled here. I've got I've got a lot going on here, and you know, as I said, I like getting out in the boat and doing some fishing and stuff. So yeah. for me, at the moment, Adelaide certainly doesn't have anything. You know, doesn't miss anything that Geelong has. Um, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm yeah. settled and just looking to hopefully continue on and fulfil this sort of club and and keep living by the values that Missy's trying to introduce. Yeah, and speaking of Paddy, how's Jake Kelly going? Is he uh, recovering from that concussion, do you know? Yeah, Jake is going really well. He's recovered He's recovered well, and I think he'll look to hopefully play against Gold Coast um, on the weekend, pending some assessment stuff and whether he gets through training. But I do know he's feeling really good. I think all his symptoms have cleared up, and, yeah, I think he's in a position now where he's ready to train and, and get back to playing. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, just to finish off, mate, we do have Gold Coast up this week and uh, some of um, our listeners will be hearing this after that game, so chance to, uh, uh, you know, prophesize a little bit. Uh, they looked all right on the weekend. Um, I guess today is your... Uh, Monday is your um, look at the opposition day, is it, or is that later in the week? Yeah, we have a little bit of... Today, more so, kind of review the game from the weekend and and look to find a couple of things that we can we can fix up and make us a better side going into the next week. So we'll look at that kind of thing as, as well as a flush out today and get the legs going again and get back ready to train train really hard this week and, and prepare for a good game against Gold Coast. But we'll look at them probably more so down the track in the week and, and see what they bring. But at the moment, it's about us. You know, we know what kind of brand our pros for the years, and if we bring that, we feel like we can match it with with anyone in the competition. Yeah, uh, well, your game against Geelong certainly showed that. Uh, the way you controlled uh, the contest uh, f- for periods of that game was, was fantastic. It was so exciting. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned with Tex, seeing a lead up forward again, it, you know, it takes us back to the 90s, which is fantastic. Ned, look, it's been great talking to you, mate. We've loved uh, seeing you come on uh, in the last couple of years. And it looks like you're... you're you know, really starting to forge a spot in, in the Crows team, which is great. You bring a lot of energy and a lot of pressure. I think uh, a lot of people are going to remember the four tackles you laid in 10 seconds against Geelong for quite some time. <laughs> um, but I, th- I don't think you got credit for those four tackles. Um, but, uh, look, we really appreciate your time and uh, we wish you all the best for the weekend and for the rest of the season. Thanks, Rob, mate. Thanks so much for having me on. It was a great chat. And, um yeah, we're looking forward to this weekend. Thanks, man. Good on you, mate. Thank you.